Thanks to Sarah Dawson, the world's slow. We're still looking at the issue of brain drain in Africa and how to mitigate this issue. And joining us on this second half is Dr. Anthony Ereimwe, a former member at the State Judicial Panel on Police Brutality and Related Matters in Nigeria. Thank you so much, Dr. Anthony, for joining us on One Slot. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so Dr. Anthony, I mean, on the first half, we dealt with so much issues on this brain drain. But for you, how do you think it has really affected Nigeria in personal, uh, generally, uh, this issue of brain drain? Okay, the issue of brain drain is a general thing, even though uh, the society makes it look like it's a medical thing its own. I think in general, when we try to make it look like it's a medical thing alone, we place too low on the true problems that your brain, brain drains is supposed to be. between the alone, the number of lecturers, for instance, that have left the University of Benin, and so it is for other universities, is alarming. To say the least of the amount of persons that have left or to say the least of the amount of logic that we don't have in this country. But to tie it down to doctors alone, we belittle the true problems that the issue of brain drain is creating. Brain drain is terrible, and the earlier we appreciate the true problem that it poses, the better for all of us. It's going to affect all of us across board, including those that even to be privileged in working outside the country. Everybody in the society comes to terms with the realities of everybody. Not to play this like thinking it's just one part of one sector of the country that is everybody is living. And that's the reality. Thank you. All right, now looking at the reality, I mean, it's really affecting African countries, especially in Nigeria. And in order to curb this uh, this uh, brain drain we're seeing in Nigeria, we've seen the House of Representatives uh, proposing that Nigeria trained medical doctors must serve in the country for five years before they are given a full practicing license. So there's a gap in the medical sector, and they're saying to curb this gap, uh, before you can go overseas, first of all, you'd have worked for five years before giving you the license. You're smiling, Dr. Anthony. Uh, but do you think that uh, this uh, will actually uh, be the right way to go? I think Honorable Johnson thinks that we are in banana room. And to say the least that the kind of a law is uh, targeted towards doctors. It's laughable. We have to the first sponsor of the bill. I think all lawmakers call it a duty. To propose that is the business of legislation. But our concern is that in, in leadership, you must think around the board. Just like what is proposed, what is advanced, what is the case of it. We need to accept that what is concerned. That is what is relevant. I, I think that. Uh, it's unfortunate the people that he represents. He, I am sure they will be very disappointed at uh, the uh, when we are even hearing just now that uh, he is in America or so outside the country. It's tantamount to hypocrisy and a complete, uh, a complete. Uh, miscarriage of uh, the primary responsibility that is given to. I, 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 I think uh, it will not be retained because the body of doctors are going for the system. Just a few, yesterday or some few days ago, we had the president of the World Medical Association, the person of Dr. Napoleon Osaon, taking some, some rest to school mm. on this issue. Uh, more and more persons are talking, even the enemy at the end. The truth be told, the reality is that he has made a mistake by bringing such, uh, by proposing such a law. It's a total mistake and an abuse. Sorry, I think I'm having some issues with my phone. All right. Okay, so Dr. Anthony. Can you hear me? 
Yeah, I can hear you. But from what you're saying, you're, you're, th you're thinking that what this House of Representatives are doing uh, is not the best way to go in dealing with the issue of brain drain. So in your own view, what would you think that the Nigerian government, I mean, you're a Nigerian, uh, should do to help these doctors and, of course, curb the issue of brain drain in Africa? So curb the issue of brain drain is simple. First and foremost, make sure our electoral process Credible. So the people decide who comes into power. So when they are failing, we can just simply call the person to order. That is one. Then two, whoever is now privileged to be there, to be needful. Now let, us, the, man, let us appreciate the fact that the main reason why the reasons why people there is brain drain is not for greener pasture alone. Mm. That is just a component of the reasons why they are living. People are leaving this country because. Even when you now struggle to have the money, you can't spend the money on yourself because the man next door will be considering that, oh, this man is eating, he's getting too much of the money, and start beating you. Why? Because he doesn't have money. My, I have a doctor who said, I want to leave this country, not because the money may not be enough, but it is basic for me to survive. But please, even when you have the money, you cannot at least buy an item that you want to buy for yourself. You want to buy a car, you can't just buy it because the next man there may not be comfortable with the kind of car you want to buy. Is that a society? Or, for instance, are we to talk less? Are we to place down on the amount of doctors that have been kidnapped at the level of the line of duty? Mm. These are issues, these are pertinent issues. So, to tackle the problem of brain drain, instead to go to the root cause of the, of the, the root cause of brain drain. I tell you the truth. Ask about 100 persons, 100 persons, or let's say 100 doctors. Let's tie it down to doctors for instance. 100 doctors. About 90 to 95 will tell you they want to. Mm. Take your time to discuss with people. These same people will tell you, well, in all fairness, they do not really want to leave the country. But that seems to be the only option that is available. Some of us decided to stay back in this country because. It will not be so easy to become a second pedo in another man's world. Okay, now, Dr. Anthony. When you see. Now, Dr. Anthony, when you talk about those who have stayed back in the country, so we have a lot of people leaving the country. For those in the country, how are they managing in the health sector? Because if you have uh, very few doctors, how are these ones still in the country managing? Sorry, I didn't get that. I didn't get that. I said you were talking about the mad, the large exodus of doctors leaving the country. You also mentioned that some people okay. have decided to stay back. So I'm wondering, for those who have decided to stay back, how are they managing or coping in the hospitals uh, with fewer doctors? Well, it's not funny. Sincerely speaking, it's not funny. I do not want to list names so that it doesn't look like I'm devaluing some drugs. You go to some teaching hospitals in this country, there are no doctors. It is not enough to say that there are doctors that are not employed. There are doctors that are on the street wanting to come into the system. But the system is not employing them. And you are asking them to remain to stay. Well, the few ones that are staying are only staying maybe because of a slow acceptance of change. You know, not everybody accepts change so easily. A slow acceptance of change from other environmental factors some other societal factors or traditional factors that keeps them back. It is not necessarily because of anything, because they are enjoying life better in this environment. They are not really, in all fairness. They are not. And you really cannot ask everybody whether you like it or not, no matter how sweet their ideology may be. You can't ask everybody, skilled to us, we must leave the country, we must leave the country. I think that is the reason why those that are here are staying. To say how are they coping? I'm not sure they are coping. They are just they are just working to live. Yes, life may not be that terrible for everybody, but we know that in reality there are certain basic things that you should get from a society that is not coming to them. I think they are just surviving, mm. not like uh, happy that they are here. Okay, I, I need some clarity on something you mentioned. You said some doctors are actually on the street. Now, and you mentioned the fact that the system is not employing them. What do you mean by that? A lot of doctors are on the street wanting to get into a residency training or a federal government employment so that they will be able to also commit their own uh, path 
of the their own they, they should be able to commit their own responsibility and help the society better. But you meet CMDs and MDs, not employing these people for one or two reasons. Either that the federal government has placed an embargo on employment, or there is one or two and three other reasons why they are not employed. We are rash. There is no manpower. Even at the level of these hospitals. Now we hear again, oh, the amount of uh, doctors to patient ratio is too wide relative to what's outside. We are there are doctors on ground, however, not really like it in north. Now this does not, however, let us not misquote it. This does not, however, buy, I'm not, however, trying to buy excuses for brain training anyway, or for doctors to leave. It is painful. Sincerely, it is very painful. So that seems to be the options that they have. But now that they are taking the options, what should the system that wants to help itself do? Employ more persons from the street. Let them go into the system and do their bit. Sometimes they may get the conviction there where they don't want to leave. But here you have a government, the federal government has put embargo, or there is no money to pay doctors, or this and that and that, and you think those people should still remain here. Many of the persons that are living, they go and get money from anywhere. Some will even borrow and sell some trade uh, their life worth away. Some will leave the country. It's not funny. We have heard of people spending as high as 30 million naira to live to, to, for himself and his family to relocate outside this country in a good society. Let us tell us. 30 million naira is enough to make a good investment and be living well. Mm. But yet, you see someone doing that as if. Having outside this country is an investment. That is the only option the society is giving them. Let the society give them another option so that they can make their contributions and see no reason in traveling out of this country. Even those that are there. A lot of them confide in us that they want to come back. The ones that have been there for so long, they can come back. Mm. The society they are coming back to does not equate where they are where they are coming from. How do they cope? Okay, now over time in Nigeria, are we seeing uh, Dr. Anthony, we've seen lots of strike by either the rational residency doctors, uh, the resident doctors, or even from the, the medical association, all complaining about remuneration. Uh, why do we continue to have that in Nigeria? And why is it that they still, I mean, you go on strike and then you call off the strike, but yet your demands are not made. What exactly is going wrong in that chain of demand and supply? Well, the truth is, you know, it's a business of government. A lot of truth will not be told, and I do not need to echo too much on it. But in all fairness, doctors are humans. You will just see a doctor coming out and shouting, uh, we need remuneration, we need remuneration. Because that is what the government is making the people appreciate. But that is not all. A lot of times, resident doctors call out, say, oh, we are engaging the government on a strike, until the government makes some uh, uh, advancement on our healthcare system. Mm. Make, bring in some facilities that are good. They won't mention that. They will want to blackmail the unfortunate innocent people that oh, they are shouting out because of funds and the rest. There been a lot of uh, strikes. Even though sometimes in, uh, in certain occasions, the remuneration will be part. It will always be part of it. Because the system is becoming too expensive to leave. And there are certain remunerations that are just enough. There is nothing you can do about it. But again, that was not the only reason they came out for strike. They also came out to say, oh, these wards, these facilities in these theaters are not enough. We need facilities. We need infrastructures to be able to do our job better. The whole beauty of it is, it is if these facilities are better or the remuneration are better, it is the innocent citizens that will enjoy it. But the government chose to jettison those words and come out to say, oh, uh, they are shouting for money to create a blackmail. So it's unfortunate. And if they continue to in that business, you see that we are also still coming again to the table where we are saying, do the need to so that the, 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 the scourge of brain drain will drop almost naturally. Still looking at the issue of brain drain, I mean, we've seen the World Health Organization, and uh, we see lots of doctors migrating to the United Kingdom, and uh, recently there's been a list about 53 countries are on the red list, and Nigeria is one of them. In other words, these foreign countries should not actively recruit uh, from these countries that have been placed on the red list, which Nigeria is on. Uh, what is your take on that? Do you think that that is the right way to go? Well, I, we can't take a decision for the government of uh, uh, UK. They have their life, they have their rights, they have their reasons why they have decided to they have their reasons why they have decided to come up with that policy. Uh, but it's convenient to say that it is not fact based from the Nigerian uh, 
for the one who the leadership of the Nigeria's administration to stop the scourge of a, a brain drain, especially in medicine, as if that is the only problem. Uh, however, the British, in all fairness, with all respect for them, should be ashamed of themselves. And what power, whether you like it or not, to allow a country like Nigeria to be taking, to be deciding how they will take their decisions and what they will, how who they will employ, how they will, it's a shame. You go back to record, say two, three, four years, even last year, you see their record of best practicing doctors in the United Kingdom. Ah, Nigeria, this is a good brain. Dr. Anthony? Okay, so Dr. Anthony has been talking to us about this issue of uh, brain drain in Africa, especially in Nigeria. He talks about so much about how the government has failed to do what is needed to bring in place good facilities, uh, looking at the education of these medical practitioners. Uh, we've, we've also been able to see how deeply this has affected the health system in the sense that those who have migrated have left a huge gap for work for those who are still in the country. He also talked about the fault of the system, in this, in especially in employing these doctors who have been on the street. And I think one thing that Dr. Anthony is still clamoring for is that the government needs to do what is needed to create a more peaceful environment or a, a very stable environment uh, politically so that doctors do not actually migrate to other foreign countries. This is what Dr. Anthony, from what I can see, uh, is trying to understand or trying to explain to us about situations in Nigeria. He also referred to the situation in Nigeria where uh, they talked about uh, five years before they get licensing. He as a doctor is still insisting that this is not the right way to go. The government should do what is needed, bring about a good atmosphere, bring good facilities, medical facilities, and then the brain drain would be reduced in Africa. Unfortunately, I don't think we're able to get Dr. Anthony with us. would have loved to hear more about his take on the issue of brain drain in Africa. But as they say, the issue of migration will continue uh, for a very, very long time. And in the words of Barack Obama, I'm going to use this quote from him. Uh, this is a word that the former U.S. president said. He said, if we have African leaders, government and institutions which are creating a platform for success and opportunity, then you will increasingly get more talent wanting to stay. Once you reach a tipping point, not only will you stop the brain drain, then it will start reversing. These are the inputs from the guests we've had today. Once government does what is needed, then possibly we might have a reduction of brain drain. Once we have a good health system, then possibly we'll have a reduction of people going outside the country uh, to uh, the European shores for greener pastures. This is unfortunately how we draw the curtains for today's edition of One Slot. To join us again next week for another edition on One Slot. I am Rita Amwadia. Many thanks for watching.